Here we go with our first pack of Everson Restored, and we have opened up the Wolfia Silverheart, and that's probably the best green rare you can open, and it might be one of the best rares you can have overall. So we are definitely going to take it. The question is what our neighbors are going to do. There is an Avenger, Seraph of Dawn, two less exciting cards in Ringleader and Exterminator. Maybe somebody is going to go black with either Geist or Ghoul Flash. Inquisitor is nice, but there's quite a lot of different cards people might be interested in, except for blue cards. So we might have the chance to go green-blue, but we can also draft any kind of color combination given this pack. And somebody else also took the rare in front of us, passing us a Wolfia Avenger, which of course we don't want to pass for two reasons. First of all, we don't want our left neighbor to get two Wolfia Avengers in a row, uh, thinking that he can draft green. And it's also the best card in this pack. Even better given our first pick. Now, Homicidal Seclusion is always a sign that black is open because it's uh, the one of the key components of a black deck. There's also a whole geist, which I don't like that much because it's just so expensive at 6. And the other cards aren't too great. Righteous Blow is okay and a mass of the components is also fine in a blue deck. I like to have one of them, but usually you want the other commons more than a mass of the components, in fact. So I think we have three options here. Picking a mass of the components uh, would be the first option, just going for a blue-green some kind of blue-green deck. Picking the whole guys is the second option for um, staying in color mainly and it's it's a fine card so we, we would uh, cut green more, effic more effectively and I think the third option is picking Homicidal Seclusion but I don't feel comfortable doing this with these green first picks so I think I'm going to pass on the pass on the black cards and hopefully our cutting of green helps us in the second pack. We have passed one Wolfia Avenger, but that's it. So I don't think people are able to draft green behind us, which should should put us in a good position. Now, here we have Timberland Guide, and not much else. Cloud Shift is a nice trick. Galvanic Alchemist is playable, as is Driver of the Dead and Spectral Gate Guards, but none of them are are really interesting. So a two two four two, that's also nice with our with the remaining cards we have is a great way to continue this draft. Now, there is still quite a lot of interesting cards here. We have the two five drops in green, the, two, the common five drops, eaten by spiders as a way to deal with flyers, although the reach on Geist Trappers would be a better way to do that. Butcher Ghoul and a Master Components, as well as Gallows at Willow Hill, which I've never really seen uh, become active. So. Butcher Ghoul is nice, but less exciting than amongst the components. But the question is if we simply want the Geist Trappers as a way to deal with flying creatures. It's we, we already have quite a lot of power on our creatures, so I think the a way to deal with flyers is what this deck needs, and I don't want to go into blue for amongst the components. I could see this deck splashing blue with the help of um, Borderland Ranger, but it's too early to tell. So, sadly, we only are, we are only getting expensive spells here. And while I'm willing to pick up a second Trappers, that would put my five drop count to three. So I either need a lot of uh, Borderland Rangers or not draft any more five drops after that. But given the alternatives, there is a six drop in red, which I don't know if we can support that. Most likely, it's most likely that red is uh, being cut to our right. We didn't, we didn't see any of the good uh, red comments. Also, we aren't looking to draft an overly aggressive green deck, so it's not necessarily the case that we want to pair it with red. Now, the the green signals uh, keep coming. Nettle Swine is a perfectly fine card, even though our deck is um, the, one of the most primitive you can draft so far. 
it's still better than sheltering word and I'm not going moving into blue for a crippling chill so we are going to wait on the on the packs to see where we're going it feels like we have to pick an amass of the components at some point we have seen three so far and we could have taken them at all times it's a four drop which makes it even more important that we have two and three drops but that's kind of necessary in this format anyway i like it better than voice of the provinces or or defang although defang could also play a vital role in in this kind of deck i i just like um amass the components better now there's a wildwood geist and the two black cards wield but I'm not really interested in another 5 drop. My my deck is too expensive as is. I'm looking at either Searchlight guys as a way to move into black and get another 3 drop. Maybe even Ghoul Flash as a removal spell. But the alternative are Natural End and Fleeting Distraction. Both aren't really great. So I think I should pick one of the black cards. And Ghoul Flash is more important, I think, in the... In the matchups where our green deck is just too slow, we need all the cheap removal spells we can get. And if we end up in black, Ghoul Flash is a very fine card. Snether Sky is also an okay trick, so we can we can take that. And here, let's go with Driver of the Dead. Grave Exchange is too expensive and too situational, usually. Essence Harvest would be nice with our um, high-powered guys, but it doesn't keep us alive in the in the early game, so... Let's just pick the playable cards and then see what happens in the next pack. We are um, basically open for, for everything. Even red would, wouldn't be a problem. We have the green cards and a very nice core of our deck. Borderland Ranger has grown in value a lot because we are looking maybe even to splash something and we need to reach 5 mana. So I think after this first pack... I'd even pick it over the Force Mage, the Trusted Force Mage, but I'm not too sure about that, so let's see how it goes. Now, Herald of War is okay. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's really insane. It's it's just a very nice and efficient creature. Ledge Seeker is very good in blue if you are heavy blue. And then there is Stone Ride, not really the card we are looking for. Wandering Wolf if we want to stay in green. And not much else really. Searchlight guys, Undead Executioner, Scrap Skin, Drake, but the Drake doesn't help us blocking. So the the best blockers in this in this pack are probably the Inquisitor and the Wolf. Although the Inquisitor blocks better than the Wolf, but the Wolf is in our main color, our, our only color, which we are definitely going to play. So it also pairs nicely with the Silver Heart, and it's an overall good card that a lot of decks have trouble against. So I'm not really unhappy to pick up a 2-drop here. And there is a Force Mage. Also Demonic Rising, another expensive card. Angel's Tomb hel helps in the aggressive decks, but it's not something we are looking at. I'm not going to go for the 5-drop here. I think it's between Deathwind and Trusted Force Mage. So basically the decision is between the best green common which would be okay in our deck. I mean, it's it's always going to be very good. It's just better in a deck that it has a guaranteed 2-drop. And Deathwind as a way to remove troublesome creatures. But given that we aren't really set into black yet, I think we have to pick the Force Mage. We still we still need the 3-drops as well, so we we are getting some something very val valuable out of that pack. Now, this pack is unexciting. Spectre Prison, Grave Exchange, Riot Ringleader is very good in the in the red decks that make use of it, but otherwise they they aren't really interesting. So I think we are either going to take Thunderous Wrath or the Exterminator. The Exterminator works well with Timberland Guide and Blessings of Nature and cards like that. It's also a two drop. While Thunderous Wrath is simply a removal spell which you can you can miracle. We don't really know if we are going to end up in red. It's it's not really likely, but all the other cards are so unexciting that I don't really want to play them. I, I don't like the armament, so 
I think Thunderous Wrath is simply the better card than the Exterminator. If I had two Timberland Guides, I maybe would have would have um, gone for the for the Exterminator. Now, the packs aren't really getting better, and we still don't have a second color yet, which is not something I want to uh, be in. Not a situation I want to be in, but we have to make the best out of the packs we are dealt here. Vigilante Justice, Thunderbolt, Angelic Wall. Joint Assault would be the, the green pick. And I think Angelic Wall is probably the best card in another color. We could go for Thunderbolt as well because it helps against the flying creatures. And with the creatures we have here, I don't think that Joint Assault is an important card for us. We have enough green cards already. We have a Snare Disguise, which can act as a replacement for Joint Assault. So I think we need, to, we need to pick up a way to deal with Flyers, and Thunderbolt is is that. So because I also have Thunderous Wrath, I don't want to pick Angelic Wall at this uh, moment. And if we look at these packs, I think it's pretty clear that green is getting cut. I suppose our left neighbor took the Volfia Avenger and didn't look back. So he he can't have many green cards from the from the first pack, but maybe he had a green first pick and now he just continues to draft green, which is um well not something I can I can do much about, but that's how the packs look to me. Human Frailty is a card I really like, but if we look at black we have Ghoul Flash and Driver of the Dead. Blue has a master components and white has nothing. So in red we have Thunderous Wrath and Thunderbolt, both being um, really uh, good for our deck. So I'm going with the red 3-drop here. I just need a way to fill up my my early, early game, basically. Another Justice is not something I'm happy to see, but we are not drafting the deck that's um, too afraid of it. So we could go with either of the red cards or Sheltering Road. Sheltering Road should be really good in our deck, and we don't have that many tricks yet. So um, casting Sheltering Road on one of our five, five drops is big game. So we, we don't have enough humans to make the justice good. I, I really only like it in decks that have an insanely high amount of humans. So going with Sheltering Road here, I'm not a big fan of the airs. I also don't like the, the double casting costs given our or a mana base. Now there is an abundant growth, Pathbreaker Worm and Current Striker. And despite this deck not being a Current Striker deck, the two drop is still always going to be better than the other cards. You could think that we could splash something with abundant growth, but the best card we have so far is a Master Components and I'm not really that interested in splashing a, a card of that power level. So while well, Kruin Striker is, is really important, so I'm happy to, to pick it up here. Nightshade Peddler is fine, especially if you manage to, to pick up Lightning Prowess, then it's insane. But Geyser of Fire is usually the better card, so let's take that. And Use Spirit Table, I think that's... Well, that's a card that might make our 5 drop slot or it might be boarded in for Geist Trappers if our opponent doesn't have any flyers. It's usually not a card I'm, I'm happy to play though. I'm usually not playing the Bladed Bracers either though. Let's take out a flyer. And both Natural Land and Rain of Thorns table. Rain of Thorns is fine, but I like Natural Land better. I'm going to hide the white, the black, and this blue card, and that should should give us a good idea of the, our options. And we see that we can still cut quite a lot of cards without a, a problem. Here we go with Terminus and Gold Knight Commander in white. Tandem Lookout, also an insane card for blue decks. But we have the option between Gloom Widow, Borderland Ranger, and Wandering Wolf. So I don't really see a reason to go for a card in, in another color here. And given what we have so far, I think that Borderland Ranger should be the best green card for us. I also like Gloom Widow, 
to block against evasive decks, but we do have the both both the trappers and the thunderbolt, and borderland ranger might enable us to splash amongst the components. There are decks where I like wandering wolf much better than borderland ranger, but this deck isn't isn't aggressive enough to say that. Now, into the void is a card that's also quite splashable, as is griff vanguard, but. It's not like we are actively looking for a splash. It's fine to only play Borderland Ranger in a in a red green deck. And here we have nice green four drops, of which we only have one so far. And I like the lumber not quite a bit. But there's also a pillar of flame. So going to pick up a pillar and we can keep in mind that the lumber not might table. Another lumber not, but currently we don't have the support, I'm afraid. We have Three five drops, which means that the Lumberard can't block when it comes down. Uh, we have one trusted force mage. We didn't pick up any of the cheap soulbound creatures, so not really something we can we can hope for. But other than that, there is really nothing in this pack. I could hate draft a Taskmaster, which shouldn't be very good against us because we have double trappers. Smuggler is okay, but not nothing I would splash. So. I think we can go with the Lumber Knot here and see if we can pick up some more cards to work with. Blessings of Nature should be a good card. We already have a Geyser of Fire and a Pillar of Flame, so I don't think we need this. Blessings of Nature is very good with Wandering Wolf, the Avenger, and different other cards in our deck, Whole Geist, for example. So, despite the fact that we didn't pick up the Executioner, no, not the, uh, the Exterminator, Blessings of Nature is still a, a nice card to have. Here we could pick up a second Snare Disguise, which I don't really like. Aggravate doesn't really do much in most cases. So I'm looking at Heirs of Stromkirk as another evasive 4-drop. Currently we, we can't play the Lumber Out, so we only have one 4-drop. And I don't want another 5-drop. And with two guys Trappers, I don't really need a, a third one. So despite the double red and its casting cost, I think that's the, the best card in this pack for us. And here it's the better Griff Vanguard against the more expensive Pathbreaker Worm, but Pathbreaker Worm is in our colors, so I think that we should go with the Soulbound creature here. Currently I don't really think we are splashing blue because we have so many playables. And we don't really need a slow card that gives us more cards for the late game because our our creatures are so efficient at for their cost that we should be able to take over any game. And Pathbreaker Worm also helps with that. As would Vorst Claw, but now that we have both Holgeist and the Worm, we don't need the 7-7. Seven, seven. There is Mad Prophet and Thunderbolt. Mad Prophet would be a nice 4-drop, but I don't really like the looting in red green we at at the point where this comes down we don't really have anything to do with the with the ability we we both need the land and the sp lands and spells so i'm going to go with thunderbolt here i think a red green deck can easily play two of them because flyers are something which we have to be really aware of now i could hate draft something i could also just take the lumber rod. it's it's also going to be a very good card against us if people have enough soul bonders. So I think I can live with my neighbors getting the other cards. That's a late wandering wolf, which makes our blessings of nature much better. And people don't want the Lamanots, but I suppose they also didn't get the right soul bond cards, so that's fine. And we can get another Snare Disguise. Uncanny P Speed is borderline playable, but this is not the deck for it. We also don't really need the Reach trick because we have Double Thunderbolt, but we can see how it, how it ends up. Now, we are going to have to pick, uh, cu cut quite a lot of cards, but that's fine. Here we go with deck building, so let's just do it the easy way, putting in all the red and green cards. 
and then we can see what makes it and what doesn't. Grounded doesn't uh, belong in the main deck, of course. The Lumbernauts I am probably not going to play. Blessings of Nature is bad for our curve, but should should still be a fine card. We have 16 creatures. If we build it like this, which is kind of the, the number I want. We also have one Borderline Ranger, so hopefully a fourth 5-drop is okay. They also work nicely together. If you make uh, this a 7-7, seven, seven, you can... Um, yeah, du double its power, which is pretty pretty insane. We do have Worm, Silverheart, Trappers, Trappers. That's four Soulbound creatures and a, for a Force Mage. So we do have five Soulbound creatures, which means that playing one Lumbernaut would be fine, but I don't think we really need it in this deck. So looking at this at the tricks, I think we can get rid of two of these and keep the red spells. Double Thunderbolt is quite a lot, but dealing fa fa 4 damage to a flying creature should be very important for this deck, so I don't want to drop any of these. But that means that Snare the Sky loses in value, it's also just not that great in our deck. So I, I think I like the Hexproof a little more. It's good because we can keep our bonds alive and also gain some life. So I like Sheltering Word over the Snare the Skies. And that would be the setup for 17 lands. We don't have many 4-drops. We could add a Lumber Knot instead, hoping to, to find a way to pair it. That's basically what I'm looking at. And I would have to cut probably a Thunderbolt or the Sheltering Word for it. So the question comes down to if... We want the 5-5 five five that sometimes isn't going to do anything, but in other games it's going to be a really dominant force. So dropping a, a Lumber out on turn 4 and then following it up with either of our 5 drops is of course very good. So it, I think it's also better than the U Spirit, but I need to play as many creatures as I can. So. If our opponent doesn't have any flyers, double Thunderbolt could be a problem. So I might want to have a Lumbernaut in the main deck instead. Yeah, let's try that. Giving us the a more diverse setup. And I also feel more comfortable playing something like 10-7, maybe. Yeah, we need to play 10-7, I think. We do have the Heirs and the Wrath, but... If we count the Borderland Ranger as an additional red source, then that should be fine. Also, if we draw this later, it's not a double red card if we don't want it to be. So I think that's a nice setup and it gives us all the options at sideboarding as well. So let's see how it goes.